Hello and welcome to Let's Code an Indie Game episode 11. This is the series where we learn the tools and techniques needed to get started with indie game development. This episode we're going to continue working on the code for our tiles which we'll eventually use to add graphics to our rooms. But first, let's take a quick review of what we did last time. Okay, so if we run our game we can see that we have a tile drawn to the screen um, and that's about it, but that, that hides a lot of code going on in the background. So let's just take a very quick look. If we take a look at our tilesheet class, which is the class we added last time, we can see that we load an image in uh, just here uh, with love.graphics.newImage, which is uh, the same, exactly the same as we do for our sprites. But then we use quads to break that image down into sections based on the tile size. You can see tile size here. So we just get the width and divide it by the tile size, and we get the height and divide it by the tile size. And the reason we do that is because if we look at our tiles, we can see that we have, <coughs> pardon me, we can see that we've got lots of tiles all packed into one image or texture. And because each of our tile is 8 by 8 pixels, we know that if we take the width and divide it by 8 and the height and divide it by 8, that's in pixels, we can iterate through the whole image and store the quads for, um, for all of the tiles in the image. And then in our get tiles method, or sorry, in our draw tile method, we can just pass in the, um, the row and the column, we're calling it tile x and tile y, for the tile that we want to draw, and that's the tile that gets drawn. So a quad, if you remember from the last episode, is just a, um, it's an object which you can use to draw part of an image. So we only want to draw one tile at a time, and so we use a quad. And if we look at where we draw our tile, we're currently just doing it in our main.lua to test that it works. Eventually we'll probably move it into our rooms uh, drawing method. We can just see that if we want to draw uh, tile 4.1, we just pass in the position, or we pass in a view like everything else. Uh, we pass in the position, so 50-50 here, and we say we want to draw tile 4.1 on our tile sheet. So that's uh, this tile here, the tile in the fourth column in the first row. And if we just run our game again, we can see that we get tile number four drawn on the screen. Okay, so now let's actually use our tile sheet class to do something a bit more interesting, a bit more impressive than just drawing one tile. So what we're going to do is go into our logic rooms folder and create a new class or a new file. New file, and we're going to call this tilemap.lua. And the job of the tile map is to describe, well, it's to describe what we want to draw on the screen and how we want to arrange our tiles on the screen. Because each tile is only, um, you know, it's only part of the story. We want to draw lots of tiles on the screen at once, so we need a way of describing that. And that's what tile map is going to do. So let's start out uh, as we always do when we create a new module and create a local table and make sure we return it at the end and then we'll go ahead and attach a create method to that table there we go and let's make a new instance which is also an empty table and make sure we return that instance Great, so how are we going to describe our tiles or our collection of tiles? Well, the easiest thing we can do is just use a great big string. Um, so it's going to look something like this, and we'll just call it map. And, you know, a string is just a series of letters. Uh, it's called a string in most programming languages, and behind the scenes it's really just an array of letters. Um, but because, you know, it's very difficult to use one letter at a time, uh, most languages have a way of letting you join them together. And Lua has quite a nice feature, which is if you use double square brackets, you can create a multi-line string. So now everything between these two brackets is, um, is just considered to be a string by Lua. Oops. These. Yep, so everything here is now considered to be a string. And we can use this to draw a, a very basic map of what we want our tiles to look like. So in order to do that, we need to decide how many tiles we want um, our rooms to be wide and how many tiles we want our rooms to be high. 
So let's just do a quick bit of maths. Where's the calculator gone? There we go. So we know our game is 270 pixels wide or 270 sort of virtual screen pixels wide. And if we uh, divide 270 by 8, because we know our tiles are 8 by 8, we get about 33.75. So that's how many tiles are in a single screen. But just having one screen is a bit boring because it means it we can't scroll left and right. So instead, let's take um, let's take 270 and let's times it by one and a half, and that gives us 405. So now we know that our room, if our room is um, 270 times one and a half, 405 pixels wide, we know that our player has some room to scroll the scroll the screen left and right. And that gives us 405, and if we just take 400 divided by 8, we get 50. So that's just a nice number to use. So we know that if our um, room is 50 tiles wide, there's enough room to scroll left and right. And we also know that 8 fits into 400 exactly. So 50 tiles wide. So let's um, go ahead and say instance uh, tile height equals 50 and now we also need oh sorry tile width equals 50 and tile height equals well we can do something similar so we know that our game is is it 180 let's check inside our view Our view just calls graphics get width. Okay, so let's check inside our config. Okay, yes, inside of main, sorry. We pass these values into view. 270 by 180, yes. So we know that's how many virtual pixels we are high. So we can just say 180 divided by eight is 22.5. So let's just go ahead and use 22 because we want a nice round number. So tile height equals 22. Okay, so we need to draw a map um, or a string which is 50 tiles wide and 22 high. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm just gonna take 10 of these guys or girls or characters, <laughs> um, 10 of those and then that's 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. And let's do a row like this. Then we can just copy this and be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Again, and then on the bottom we'll have another row of X's. Okay, so we can see it's starting to look like um, like a diagram, like a picture of how we want our tiles to be laid out. And what we do is we say we want one type of tile where we have X's and a different type of tile where we currently have full stops. And before we actually store our map on our instance, we just need to get rid of any white space. So white space is uh, new lines or spaces and we don't want those to um, confuse our tile drawing code. So what we're going to do is we're going to say instance.map because this isn't on the instance, it's currently just a local map floating inside the create method. We're going to say instance.map is equal to the local map and we're going to call something called gsub. And gsub is a method which is just attached to all strings in Lua and it lets you substitute one character for another or remove a character completely. So we're going to say um, all white space and the way you do that is you use percent %s which is just a pattern which will match any white space characters. Um, we're going to say please replace all white space with nothing. And just to make this a bit more readable, let's um, pull out white space pattern as percent %s and nothing as an empty string and then use them down here. Okay. 
And that's just so that when we come back to the code later, we, uh, we've got a better idea of what this method is doing. OK. Right, so now we have a map, and we have a width, and we have a height. And at this point, I am just going to pull our tile map into our main method. Local tile map equals require source. Nope, not graphics, is it? It's in logic rooms tile map. There we go. And let's just create a new one. And again, we can't call it um, tile map because that's the name of the module. So we'll just call it the tile map for now. And down here, we can just do the tile map equals tile map dot create. And the reason I'm doing this is just to um, check that nothing is wrong with our create method. We're not expecting anything to happen in our game yet. If we run the code, we can see that everything is still working. Very good. OK, so now let's think about how we're going to use um, our tile map. So we have a diagram of where all of our tiles are. We just need a way of going through every character in that diagram, working out where that is in relation to the screen, and then drawing a tile at that position. So let's do that inside of a function. And we'll just call this draw, because um, we're going to use it for drawing our tiles to the screen. And it's an instance method, so we need to make sure we pass in self as the first argument. And because it's a drawing method in our game, it's pretty safe to assume it's going to use a view as well. And what we also need is the tile sheet that we want to use to do our drawing. OK, so let's start by iterating over, um, over the map. So to do that, we can just say for i equals 1. So i is just a variable we're going to use to store our position. Um, and then here we can just use the length of operator. So hash is just um, an operator which will get you the length of a string or the length of a table. And if we call it on self.map, this will give us a for loop which will start at 1 and um, run up until it reaches the length of our map, or including the length of our map. So now what do we need? We need the character from our from our great big map string. So let's store that somewhere. And the way we get this is by doing self.map.sub. And sub just takes a, a substring, a smaller part of that string. And we want to start at i and end at i. So we only get one character, which is the character we're interested in for this iteration of our loop. We need the x position we want to draw our tile at. And we also need the y position we're going to draw our tile at. So if we just put these both to uh, 0 to start with. Or we could even put them to uh, i just so they do, do something. OK, and finally, we need to draw our tile sheet. So here we can just call tile sheet draw tile very good and let's remind ourselves what draw tile actually takes so let's open up our tile sheet and we can see that draw tile takes view x y tile x and tile y so one one thing to fix very quickly which i uh, Forgot. Oh no, it is there. Sorry, I thought instance dot draw tile uh, was missing, but it is obviously there. Very good. Disregard. Continue. Um, cool. Draw tile equals function. It takes a view, an x, and a y position we want to draw the tile at. The tile and the yeah tile x and tile y. So let's make use of um, let's make use of that. So x. Y, oops, sorry, the view, first of all, view, x, y, and 
the tile X and the tile Y. So let's just start by drawing one one. Then inside of our main dot lua, let's replace tiles draw tile with the tile map draw, and this takes a view and a oops view and a tile sheet, which is just called tiles. Okay, attempt to call method draw a nil value main dot lua line thirty one. And that's just because inside of our tile map, we need to make sure we return or we attach the draw method to the instance. So instance.draw equals draw. Let's try again. Okay, so we can see that we are drawing all of our tiles. We're not drawing them in the right place yet, but it would seem as though we are drawing all of the tiles we need. So that's pretty positive. So let's fix our X and our Y positions. So the X position of our tile needs to start in the top left hand corner, uh, which will be zero. So let's, um, first of all, because we know I starts at one, uh, because most indexes start at one in Lua, we're just going to do minus I minus one, so it starts at zero. And the same thing for Y. So the X is going to be our um, row on the screen. Yeah, that's right, rows. So the X is going to be the row on the screen. And we just want this to go up by the width of the tile every time. So let's times it by tile sheet um, dot tile size, because our tile sheet conta already contains the size of our tile. And the same thing with our Y value. So if we go ahead and run it now, we can see that we just draw our tiles diagonally. Um, so that's progress, and we know we start drawing them in the right place. So the next thing we need to do is rather than drawing our tiles diagonally, we need to draw them in rows and columns. So to get the um, X position, we can use the um, modulo or remainder operator. And what this does is it will just give us the remainder of dividing um, the thing on the left with the, the thing on the right. So if we actually go ahead and do self.tilewidth, I think we called it, yep. If we divide this by self.tilewidth, it would give us the remainder of dividing i by our tile width, which should give us when times by, let's just put another pair of brackets in here, when times by our tile size, it should um, put, well, put the X tiles in the right place. So, oops. Oh, of course, we need to do our Y as well. So in order to, we can do something kind of similar for Y, which is just I minus one divided by self dot tile width. So what we're saying for our I values is we want to move to a new row every time or move down by one tile on the screen um, for every row that we've drawn. So the way we do that is we use math.floor on i divided by self.tilewidth and math.floor will um, give us the closest or not the closest but the lowest integer. Um, so if you have a number like Let's draw it out here. If you have 1.5 and you call math.floor on it, it will give you one. If you have, um, I don't know, 34.6, it will give you 34. So it's just chopping off the decimal point really. And again, that's what we want. Okay, let's try that. There we go. So we are successfully drawing all of the tiles. The next thing to do is to actually draw the um, draw the tiles based on the character. So now we've um, we've done that. It should be pretty simple, just to say 
if character is x, then let's just draw tile one one for now. And and if character is full stop, then draw tile. Oops. And let's just draw tile one two. Let's give that a go. Oops, we are not getting anything, so that must mean car self dot map dot sub is and indeed we wanted a colon there. There we go. Cool. So now we have a working tile map and we can use it to draw our tile sheets. So um, let's just check that this is working by, let's just overwrite some of these lines here with X's. So Atom doesn't have an insert mode by default, but you can install a package so that you can overwrite rather than, um, or insert rather than adding new characters. And all that does is it lets you uh, write over what's already there rather than putting new characters in. Cool. Let's just turn that off again. Okay, and we can see that we can basically draw our tiles or draw our levels using strings. One problem though is that um, it's currently, because we're just sticking it at the bottom of our global draw method, it's drawn on top of our player. So let's move this stuff into, into our room. So the first step is to take it out of our main.lua. So we no longer need a tile map or any tiles here. Let's make sure we get rid of these as well. Okay, now let's go into our room. And the first step is to require these. So let's say local tile sheet is equal to require And this is in source graphics tile sheet. And we can also say local tile map is equal to require source logic rooms tile map. And for now, when we create a room, it seems like it would be a sensible idea to just create the tile sheet and the um, tile map when we create our room. But you know, and we're going to move this around, this isn't our final code, but so for now, let's just put them here. Tilesheet equals tilesheet.create, and the tilesheet needs a path to, um, to the images. Let's check what else it needs. So we don't forget anything. Create, it needs a tile size and an image path. So the image path will be assets, sprites, tiles, numbers.png, and we know our tiles are eight by eight. And our tile map currently doesn't take any arguments, I don't think. Nope, so eventually we might want to pull out things like width and height into arguments, but we'll know more once we, um, well, once we know more basically. But for now, it should be okay. Okay, so now when we draw our room, we can replace our drawing code with ints.tilemap draw, and our tile map takes a view and a tile sheet, which will be ints.tilesheet.
Let's see if that works. Nope. So temp to index local inst a no of course it will be self here, not inst. Cool. And so the last thing to do is let's just make sure our room width and our room height are equal to um, our tile size or equal to the number of tiles we're using. And so for now, I'm just going to do tile sheet. Uh, times tile sheet dot tile size and this should be on the instance because we want to tie these things um, as close together as possible so now if we go to the side of room we actually move through our rooms each room currently has the same set of tiles but that's something we can fix Cool, there we go. So we now have a way of laying out our tiles. We've got a couple of things we could do in the next episode. We could start handling collisions to stop our player from going out of the room, or we could draw some better artwork and think about things like perspective and how we're actually going to start doing the pixel art for our tiles. Uh, I'm not sure which one I'm going to do yet. Uh, if you've got a preference, let if you let me know before I record it, I will probably take that preference on board. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, please like and subscribe. It does help. It lets me know that people are watching and if I do get enough subscribers then YouTube takes me slightly more seriously and I can do things like um, schedule when episodes will be uploaded and it just makes my life a bit easier to be honest. But hope you're enjoying it. Thanks very much and see you again soon. Bye for now.